What makes a piece of art good? Is it the technical skill or the time and dedication put into the piece? Or is it the artist's meaning and intention behind it? Others may say there's no good or bad, rather it's about whether or not you connect to the piece. This is a question that has changed throughout history and is very difficult to come to a definite answer. So let's instead focus on what makes Minecraft good as a form of art. A lot of people may not consider video games to be a form of art, but they very much are. In fact, they combine many different forms of art such as illustration, 3D modeling, music, and storytelling. Take the serene and calming landscapes from Firewatch or the creepy and glooming vibes from Limbo. Looking at Minecraft, it appears extremely simple. Some people criticize the game for having bad graphics, but the pixelated textures of the game work. You can slap on a hyper-realistic texture pack, but in my opinion, this makes the game look worse, because trying to make a perfect 3D cube look realistic by putting flat realistic images on them doesn't make it realistic. It's trying to be realistic, but it fails because the fundamental way the game works does not allow it to. Pixel art is perfect for a game like Minecraft. Not only does it allow for the game to be played on pretty much any device, I mean, you could literally probably build a PC using a chicken wing and Minecraft would still run. But it also works synonymously with the blocky nature of the game. Each texture isn't just created in 5 minutes on Microsoft Paint. The art team at Mojang goes through a long process to get it right. Every Minecraft texture starts off as concept art, generating ideas for how an item or a mob will look and function. If you ever try learning about concept art, it's not easy and the artists have to take an abstract idea and somehow figure out how it will fit inside Minecraft's theme. Then there's actually creating the pixel art. Pixel art may seem easy and simple, but simplicity is also what makes it extremely hard as you're heavily limited by the resolution of the image, and changing just one or a few pixels could dramatically shift how the final outcome is perceived. It's challenging enough to know where to place each pixel, but it's even harder to achieve a realistic or aesthetic representation. Often hundreds of iterations of a block are created before settling on a final design. I actually found a really good article that breaks down the art style of Minecraft, and I think it really illustrates how complex designing Minecraft textures can be, so if you want to check it out, it's in the description. Finally, everything also has to be 3D modeled and sometimes animated. Motion design is taking the pixel art we just talked about and making it move in a seamless and believable way. Think about how the particles fly away from a player or mob when you land a critical hit, or the animation of a block breaking. It would be easy to just use realistic depictions of these but instead they set artistic expectations for the player. We know when a block is about to break, when the gray pixels cover the entire block, and we know when we've damaged a mob when they flash red. Now we take all these technical and conceptual barriers and then they have to meet a certain set of requirements. First, it has to fit with the overall theme of the game. Mojang has their own set of design principles which inform every gameplay and aesthetic choice made. For example, they seem to stick to an overall fantasy theme. Secondly, a block has to look good when repeated. This is called tiling, where one block seamlessly connects with the same block when placed next to one another. This is important as blocks are often repeated in a game, such as grass, stone, and netherrack. Sometimes repeating a block many times can create a whole new pattern or look, so it's not just about the individual texture that needs to be considered, but also multiples of that texture as a whole. Thirdly, it needs to be versatile. A player should be able to look at a block and think of many possibilities that can be used by that block, and it shouldn't look too restrictive to where it could only be used in one scenario. Think of all the blocks that have a very specific function, but can be used in many other aesthetic ways. This is where I think the magic of Minecraft's art comes to life. Its simplicity is what makes it beautiful, as it knows what it's trying to be and doesn't try to be what it's not. It doesn't overcomplicate itself with realistic graphics or representations. It doesn't feel the need to meet the aesthetic standards of modern titles. It embraces its outdated art style and has crafted an identity out of it. It took something developers used to do out of necessity and made it timeless. Minecraft is also a work of art that allows you to create art. Every pixel is intentionally designed to inspire creativity and allow everyone to be an artist. Every single mansion, sculpture, or castle built by players contributes to Minecraft as a work of art, because the ability for a work of art to be a catalyst for other works of art makes it beautifully unique compared to other games. 
So next time you're loading up your survival world to complete a mega project, or if you're just starting a brand new adventure, remember that you're helping to build an artistic masterpiece. Thank you.